At a recent event in Europe, quite a few new Tesla Semi details were revealed, including details about the truck's weight, how the truck is performing in their pilot fleet, both Tesla and PepsiCo's pilot fleets, Tesla's European expansion plans, an update on the mass production semi factory that Tesla's building in Nevada, and more. Stick around because I have a lot of exciting details to share. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. The electrification program manager at PepsiCo and Dan Priestley, the senior manager of semi truck engineering at Tesla, recently took part in the 2024 IAA Transportation Expo in Hanover, Germany, and specifically, they both shared a lot of new details and updated information on the Tesla Semi. As a reminder, PepsiCo was the first company outside of Tesla to add Tesla Semis to their fleets. And from what I can tell, and based on reports that I'm going to talk about in this video and what I've talked about in past videos, it looks like those Tesla semis are working out very well for PepsiCo. For example, at their Modesto, California location, PepsiCo has 15 Tesla semis. At their Sacramento facility, they have 21 Tesla semis, and they are currently deploying an additional 50 Tesla semis at their Fresno, California location, which is proof that the Tesla semi is working out well for them because obviously PepsiCo would not add 50 more Tesla semis to their fleet if the rest of the Tesla semis in their fleet were not doing well for them. One of the great things about the Tesla semi and one of the reasons why I'm really excited to see mass production of this truck is because it really allows for a no compromises diesel replacement. And this is something that the manager of electrification at PepsiCo did make very clear during the IAA Transportation Expo event. He specifically said, quote, we have been able to really continue our operations from baseline diesel and CNG with the Tesla Semi. Charging is part of that. It's been able to really match the duty cycle of our trucks and keep things fluid to where we're able to operate in a similar or same fashion. I wanna emphasize this once again because this is a really big deal. The Tesla Semi is able to be used by PepsiCo without compromises. They're able to just use that like they would a regular diesel Semi without having to change the way they drive their freight around with extended wait times, etc. That's a really big deal. And on top of that, the Tesla Semi, as compared to a diesel truck, has huge benefits, including cost benefits. In the past, this is something that I've mentioned, and I did a specific video just around this topic about how much PepsiCo could save by adding Tesla Semis to their fleet. And I projected in the not too distant future, PepsiCo could be saving billions of dollars with Tesla Semis in their fleets. But during this event, an actual cost savings percentage was mentioned. Specifically, the PepsiCo representative said, quote, we have seen and are seeing electrification of the fleet provide a lower cost solution over time. Later on, it was added, quote, two big factors to savings is really fuel as well as maintenance. Diesel prices, specifically talking about their operations in California, are extremely high. With electricity cost, there are some cases where we're able to leverage EV dedicated rates that in combination with peak shaving, with the integration of Megapack, we have been able to drive down that cost of fuel each month. In some cases, we see that 25, 30%. Now, of course, a fuel savings of 25 to 30% is a big deal. But in addition to that, the Tesla Semi requires less maintenance. And this is something that was also mentioned, quote, I know maintenance across the board, light duty EV, heavy duty EV maintenance is an improvement with electric vehicles. We don't have the exact numbers about how much they're saving with the Tesla semis. And obviously there are some upfront costs associated with not only buying the trucks themselves, but with the charging equipment. But nonetheless, in the long term, PepsiCo is going to be saving, it looks like, lots of money by adding Tesla semis to their fleet, which is why I believe they made the decision once again to add 50 Tesla semis to their Fresno fleet. Now, one of the big reasons why the Tesla semi is able to replace a diesel semi without compromise is because it's extremely efficient. Even fully loaded, the truck can get around 500 miles of range, and Tesla has proven that to be the case. When it comes to real world efficiency numbers, this was also something that was mentioned by the representative from PepsiCo. And he specifically said, quote, on the free to lay side where we do run a little bit more light, we have seen over a year and a half, two years, pretty much consistently 0.8 kilowatt hours per kilometer, which equates to 1.29 kilowatt hours per mile efficiency, which is fantastic. It was added, quote, 
the heavy duty Pepsi side with Tesla's in Sacramento, and then now soon as we're deploying Fresno, pretty much follows suit. It is the same number, if not a little better that we shared from the run on less, which is one kilowatt hour per kilometer that equates to 1.61 kilowatt hours per mile efficiency. So it's great to see that the Tesla Semi in real world applications is extremely efficient. And once again, this is a big reason why the Tesla Semi is able to replace diesel semis. If it wasn't so efficient, you would have to add a larger battery pack, which would of course cut down on the payload. And I'll talk about that. And there are some encouraging numbers that were released at this IAA event that actually reveal that the Tesla Semi weighs less than I thought it did. Now, when it comes to the specific average payload that PepsiCo is using on their beverage side with the Tesla semis, it looks like that number is typically fully loaded, the truck, the trailer, and everything, and the, the cargo, they're running at around 70,000 pounds or 35 tons. So that once again is not completely maxing it out at 82,000 pounds. But that is a good load. It's not like they're just hauling chips with a Tesla Semi. They are doing serious work with a Semi, and it is once again getting very good efficiency. The next topic that I want to highlight from this event was the fact that with PepsiCo adding these Tesla Semis to their fleet, it's actually a great tool for driver retention, and I believe also for recruiting new drivers because the drivers want to drive the Tesla Semi. The PepsiCo representative specifically said that, referring to driver retention, a big piece of it too. We get a lot of driver feedback with our different fleets. It was added, there has been this excitement plus just positive reaction, obviously for the purpose of what we're doing and the goals that we've set forth, but also just the experience you know, the simplicity of it. In addition, it was made clear that their transition from diesel to electric has actually been extremely smooth and has been well received by their drivers. A specific example was even given, quote, I was in Fresno a few months ago. We have a driver who's been a diesel driver for 30, 40 years, and his feedback was just so positive. It was like a kid in a candy store. We asked him, how do you like the truck? And the feedback is usually the same. I don't want to go back to diesel. This is the future. This is what I want to drive. Of course, a Tesla Semi is not the only electric semi truck on the market, but I do believe it's the only truck that can replace a diesel truck when it comes to long haul applications. And PepsiCo is actually using Tesla semis for these long haul applications. When it comes to their long haul applications, they're actually using the Tesla semi with a slip seat operation. And that was specifically described here, quote, so these drivers, they actually operate in a slip seat fashion, meaning that a driver has his or her shift they may run, you know, 800 kilometers or so within that shift. And then at that point, return to the depot, there's maybe a 30, 45 minute pause. And that same truck is then taken by another driver, goes back on route. And to be clear, it was made very clear here that with these slip seat operations and these long haul operations, this is for hauling beverages with a decent load. It was specifically added, quote, this is with heavy payload. When we did the run on less, for example, last year, we showed that the majority of the time we were actually total combined weight at about 35 tons, which is once again around 70,000 pounds. Now, PepsiCo has been driving these Tesla semis quite a bit and collectively with PepsiCo's Tesla fleet, they've driven those trucks about 3.8 million kilometers, which equates to 2.36 million miles. And it looks like overall these trucks have been reliable for them. Okay, beyond the conversation with Dan Priestley and the PepsiCo representative there, Dan Priestley also did a keynote at this event, and I want to share some highlights from that event as well and some new details that were revealed during that keynote. Now, this event was held in Hanover, Germany, and Dan Priestley made very clear that Tesla intends to expand to the European market with their semi trucks. He mentioned specifically referring to European commercial trucking. We want to be part of this. We want to help leverage the experience we have, not just with our North America pilot fleet, but also with EVs overall in order to help accelerate that transition to sustainable energy. Now, in the past, I thought Tesla would have to do some pretty major modifications to the Tesla Semi 
to make it approved for European roads, but it looks like major modifications will not be necessary. Yes, some modifications, but not major modifications. Dan Priestley specifically mentioned referring to the Tesla Semi, quote, we designed the Semi from day one to be a compelling product across multiple markets, including Europe. Now the truck that you see at the booth is just one variant. We adopted our pilot production North American truck for the European market and roads. Thanks to the 2020 rules, the dimensions and weights, direct modifications, the Tesla Semi will be street legal in Europe and be compatible with European trailers. Beyond the European expansion, Dan Priestley revealed some details about how much the truck weighs, which I haven't seen any official numbers yet, so this was actually really exciting for me. During the keynote event, Dan Priestley had this slide up, and you can see there for the long range Tesla Semi, it has a weight listed as less than 10,500 kilograms. So that weight is actually a little bit less than I thought, and for an electric semi truck to weigh under 10,500 kilograms and still be able to drive, 500 miles fully loaded, that's a big deal. The reason why the weight of the Tesla Semi matters so much is because if the truck weighs too much, that means that there is a weight penalty, meaning it cannot actually carry as much payload weight as a diesel truck. But we know, for example, according to Dan Priestley, the truck weighs less than 10,500 kilograms. So let's just make it easy and say 10,433 kilograms is roughly what the Tesla Semi weighs. And if you do the conversion there over to pounds, that means I estimate the truck weighs around 23,000 pounds. If we have a trailer that it's pulling that weighs 10,000 pounds, of course, an empty trailer weighing 10,000 pounds, that means that the Tesla Semi on US roads would be able to haul up to 49,000 pounds of payload. When you compare that to a typical class eight diesel truck there, you can see that the typical truck will weigh somewhere between 15,000 and 25,000 pounds. So that means that the cargo capacity of a typical diesel truck, once again, with a trailer, the empty weight of the trailer being 10,000 pounds, that leaves you, once you subtract around 1,000 pounds for the weight of diesel fuel, that gives you a range of around 44,000 pounds to 54,000 pounds of cargo capacity. So in the past, when Elon and others have made the statement that there is no cargo penalty with a Tesla Semi, this is why. Because the truck does not weigh that much. It weighs less than I thought, and it obviously weighs way less than those who have argued in the past that electric Semi trucks were not practical because they just weighed so much. Obviously, they're way wrong. The Tesla Semi does not weigh that much, and there really isn't a weight penalty when it comes to the cargo capacity of the truck. The exciting thing is it looks like Tesla is working to actually decrease the weight of the truck even further, and it's very competitive right now, but Dan Priestley also mentioned, quote, now these numbers, particularly the mass ones, represent today, and there's no exemptions factored in here, no weight exemptions. And on top of that, we think that there are additional levers to pull to reduce these masses even further. Now, I mentioned specifically that PepsiCo has been using the Tesla Semi and they've been driving quite a few miles, but of course, Tesla is using these semis in their fleet as well. And Dan Priestley mentioned specifically, quote, to date, we have driven more than 7.5 million kilometers, which equates to 4.66 million miles with the pilot Tesla semi fleet. So that's the fleet in general. But when it comes to one specific truck, Dan Priestley mentioned, quote, just as a data point, we have a truck in our fleet that is less than a year and a half into operations. It has driven more than 400,000 kilometers, which equates to 248,000.5 miles. These are not simulated. Those are not accelerated. Those are real world miles. And those have all been done at North American gross vehicle weight limits to enable 15 million ton kilometers of work. So the Tesla semis are being used by PepsiCo and Tesla to do real work, and they are being used quite a bit. Now, of course, Tesla is getting a lot of data from all this use, and they're using that to really get the Tesla semi ready for mass production. And when it comes to mass production, Dan Priestley also gave an update on their mass production factory that they're building in Nevada. Dan specifically mentioned, quote, now we are constructing a factory outside of Reno, Nevada, near one of our existing plants that will be capable of building more than 50,000 units a year. We look forward to scaling production throughout 2026, and we see that Europe is the next market following the ramp in North America. Now, originally Tesla planned for their semi-factory to be connected to their existing Nevada factory. 
but instead they pivoted to a standalone building and it looks like production at that factory will probably happen sometime in 2026, maybe late 2025, early 2026 with production ramping up in 2026. And then once they get that production ramped up, I believe 2027, 2028, sometime around there, Tesla will start expanding to Europe. I don't know about you, but I'm extremely excited for the future of the Tesla Semi, and I'm really happy to hear that things appear to be going well, both in Tesla's fleet and in the PepsiCo fleet, and that mass production of the Tesla Semi is not that far away. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to know what you think. And in addition, I'd like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.